Two nothing is our score as we head to the bottom of our third inning of play. Another nice sized crowd gathering here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. And that's not surprising. You knew it was coming at one point or another. Both benches have been warned. The Cardinals have had enough of getting spun around. Clement gets hit by a pitch. Heron was hit by a pitch. And now if anybody else gets hit, they're going to get run from the game, as will the pitcher's manager. Well, you don't really have to get hit. All you have to do, in the opinion of the umpire, is throw at anybody. And now Dusty Baker's going to come out. He's going to talk with Mike Riley. Said, geez, that one just got away. Why you... Why would you warn us after my pitcher got hit intentionally? This goes back to last night when Kerry Woods spun Matt Morris a couple of times. But Heron got hit in his first at bat today. Well, the first pitch is low and in. And you figure Heron is probably trying to send a message. The second pitch, the message is unmistakable. And again, fortunately, he hit him in the leg, so he's going to be all right. I mean, I don't advocate hitting anybody, but eventually you figure that there's going to be something inside. What Dusty is trying to communicate is, look, in a bunt situation, we hit their pitcher, but it put runners at first and second with nobody out. There's no way in the world that... And now Dusty starts to holler at Tony La Russa. They've had their share of... And now Dusty's asking La Russa to come out and talk about it. They've had their share of shouting matches. Remember the playoffs last year. Well, look, you're playing a team eight times in a short period of time. I think that if this thing escalates at all, Al Roboski and Ron Santos should go head to head, battle it out. Ronnie might be able to actually get a hit in, something he wasn't able to do during the course of his career. And Dusty most unhappy, as you would expect. But he does have a man on. There is nobody out. And you head to the top of the lineup in a very close game. Your pitcher's not hurt. That should be the end of that for the moment. And we'll go from there. Ah, some hostility. Probably not deciding where they're going to have dinner. For those of you who read lips, he's saying, I'm not having a fine time. Now, one area where you're glad you have Mike Riley behind the plate, he's the guy with the most tenure. It's a good thing because cooler heads you figure are going to prevail. Where the umpires are put in an awfully difficult situation is they have to read the mind of either manager and either pitcher. As you mentioned, a bunt situation when you need a pop-up. How do you know? Well, there's another factor here, Chip, and that is when you throw at somebody, if you're a young pitcher, it creates a whole lot of adrenaline in your system. And if you are a young pitcher, sometimes your control that you really need goes away. Now Dan Heron's got a real good chance here of either laying one very hittable to Lofton or just walking him outright. It's an emotional situation when you throw at somebody. Veteran pitchers can deal with it easily. Heron is not a veteran pitcher. Ground ball at the back. Tino steps, no force. You got to apply the tag and the Cardinals turn a nifty double play. I would just like to see the Cardinals once or twice not execute on defense. They're able to do it all the time. And as soon as he tags, you know that there has to be a tag play at second. That's exactly what happened, and he made a very good throw. Unfortunately, this fastball is on the inner portion. Lofton is out on the tag. And then he tags Clement coming in at second. Matt Clement didn't go to the bag either, you might note. He went within arm's reach of the second base pillow, and Edgar Renteria gave him an interesting glance as he was tagged out for the second out of the frame. Here's Ramon Martinez. 
He has one of the Cubs two hits on the day. Line down the left field line. That's into the corner. Ramon's got at least two. Big turn there, and now he'll stop. Well, I got to tell you, Dan Heron is not out of the woods yet, and this being a very emotional inning for him might lead to a couple runs, and I think that's why Dave Duncan is coming to the mound. He's going to tell him, look, we've sent our message. What's done is done. Don't worry about Dusty yelling at Tony or Tony yelling at Dusty. They're probably not going to go to dinner anyway. I want to calm you down and get you back to thinking the way you have to think. We have a two-run lead. You're going through the heart of their order. You want to get out of it here with Sammy Sosa. You don't want to get it to Moises Alou. That being said, he still has to depend on a young pitcher making good pitches, and right now he can easily see this game tied. Sosa hit a line drive to Pujols in the first inning of play. Cardinals got two in the opening frame, and they lead. Well, that was a mistake by Heron. Look at where Matheny was set up. He had to reach back across his body right down the middle of the plate to make the grab, and it was called a strike. Now, within he wants it outside because he wants to pitch around him. And that ball had the whole plate. I don't know what Sammy's arguing about. It's a perfect pitch. But then he sets up same spot. That's way away. Now, you have to keep the catcher in the catcher's box. And I'm sure Riley has taken a close look at where Matheny's setting up. But they're obviously pitching around Sammy. Yeah, he's in it. Left foot's in. Well, again, Heron is not throwing the ball outside. He's making a mistake. If Sammy looks out there. Heron looks like he's drifting the ball on the outside corner of the plate. They don't want it there. Again, with this guy pitching like this, I, I don't understand why managers don't just say, if you're not going to pitch the man, go ahead and put him on because the likelihood of a younger pitcher making a mistake is much greater, you figure, than that of a guy like Wood or Pryor or Woody Williams. This ball four it works out, but as you saw in the first pitch of that sequence, it was right down the middle of the plate, and that's not at all where they wanted it. Well, don't forget, Steve Fine was trying to walk Sammy Sosa also, and Sammy got himself out in a similar situation. Well, he was wise to at that time, however. And now Alou a chance to turn this game around and put the Cubs in front. First Heron base on balls. Here's Alou. He singled his first time up. You got to like the Cubs' chances here with Moises up against the youngster. Line drive left field. That ball is going to get down. And Wendell Kim is going to put up the stop sign. Ramon ran right through it. And he is out. Wendell Kim had the stop sign on. That was not Wendell Kim's fault. Ramon ran through the red light. Well, Sammy was also going to third with the red light on. So the Cubs have shown in this series they are one bad base running team. This ball hit right at Pujols. He makes a perfect throw. Ramon is out uh, by a good 30 feet. Close games. If you make mistakes, you're going to get beat. The Cubs have run the bases very, very, very poorly all series long. 